Our next guest says less debt will help the U.S. avoid a Greece-like situation, something he's very familiar with. Andrew Feltis is the manager of the Pioneer Global High Yield Fund, which Bloomberg ranks among the top global bond funds for the past one, three, and five years. He's avoiding European debt because of the continent's fiscal problems and rising interest rates, both of which he says will limit growth. Andy, good to have you here with us. Oh, thanks for having me. So it's interesting. We've had some folks on who said they actually find some opportunity in some of the European debt. It's a risk-reward thing here. You're avoiding it completely? No, not completely. You have to look at each company, each country on its own merits, and then look at where you're getting paid for risk. Uh, but overall, the euro's definitely got some tough problems because you do have high debt levels. Right. You have a lot of countries that are purely struggling, and the ECB is raising rates, which really squeezes the, the weaker countries on both the liquidity front and the costs they have to pay. So that could lead to a combination of policies that, that could blow up in their face. Well, that's interesting because do you feel like there, you know, again, we have people on who say, you know what, the Europeans, the ECB, um, the EU, they're going to take care of whatever problems plague the region. Others say maybe not so much. Germany's going to get tired of it and so on and so forth. I mean, where do you weigh in? Do you feel like the worst, we've seen the worst when it comes to the European sovereign debt crisis? I, I don't think it's over yet. As long as the ECB is tightening, that's going to keep pressure. And remember, the ECB doesn't have a, a mandate like the Fed. They don't have the dual mandate, Exactly. Right? It's straight inflation. And so and they're, they're very hawkish on that, and they act independently, and they're extremely independent. But, you know, when we say Europeans, look, there's Germans, and there's French, and then there's English, a large and group. Irish, and they all have different problems. They all have different parts of their economy doing better or good, or better or worse in some situations. So drill down for us. You know, we bring you on because you've got a great track record here, and not just a short term, but a long term. So when you look at Europe specifically, where do you find the opportunity? What countries, what companies, and so on? Well, you know, you should look at a country just like a company. You look at the balance sheet, you look at how productive they are, and you look if they're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. So Norway is a country in Europe, AAA rated, very low debt, running big current account surpluses, growing, and they benefit because they have a lot of oil. And so that's the type of country I want to benefit. It's commodity currency. Uh, its neighbors aren't great, uh, but these guys look good compared to any country in the world. What about the U.S.? Where are you in terms of the U.S. high yield situation, which has done well for several years here? Yeah, we're, we're overweight the U.S., and, and that's really going to what you get paid to be in emerging markets or Europe. And, and there's some great companies out there. And 60 percent, I think we had some numbers. That's correct. Uh, uh, is what you are. Is that typical for you, 60 percent? That's higher. The that's the high end. The range is okay. going to be 40 to 60. And we're at the high end because we don't find compelling opportunities elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, emerging markets is really the go-to because that's where the growth is. But the problem is, is that there's been convergence between the U.S. and emerging markets. So it's really company by company, seeing if what you get paid and finding those really good companies. And there are a lot of great companies. There just aren't as many as they're used to. Can you be a little specific for us in terms of some of the opportunities you're seeing in high yield right now for the especially since high yield has done well for some years, I think it, the opportunities are getting tougher maybe to find here. Yeah, well, I think when you look forward, you know, you can't see 20% returns out of high yield. And we look at high yield compared to other bond classes, it's still attractive, but spreads have come in, they're a little bit better than average, but fundamentals are great. Mm -hmm. You know, default rates are going down to 2%. Mm -hmm. you know, that's basically extremely Rates are still low. low. That exactly. All that's great for the high yield market, and profitability is great. So you should see spreads come in steadily. Uh, but not to the extent we've seen, which gets you to a good return. But, you know, I, I'd call it a 7 on right. a scale of 1 to 10. You shouldn't be massively overweight, but you don't want to be underweight. What happens when rates start to rise? Of course, we're in this big debate about when the Fed ends QE2 and when rates start to rise. Tougher than for the high-yield market? Uh, it, it, well, it's a great question. Uh, clearly, when that happens, Treasuries will, will rise, and that's going to put pressure on all bonds. But that also implies the economy is doing well. Those fundamentals should remain good, and usually you get spread convergence in that. It's not one for one, but it definitely mitigates a lot of that, that downward pressure in price. And let me just bring up, because we had a story here on, uh, at, from Bloomberg News today. It talked about the difference in relative yields between the highest rated junk bonds expanding at the fastest pace in a year. And they talked about that signaling growing concern that rising oil prices will slow the global economy. They also say the widening indicates way appetite for riskier assets. Is that playing into your thinking? Or? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't see any evidence of, 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 of less demand for risky assets. It's you know, still people, out there. People have not bought into to the equity story, and I think equities look cheap compared to the high yield, right. but they are clearly buying into the, the high yield story, whether that's uh, retail or insurance companies. I mean, the, the, the flows are unbelievable. You know, we had one bad week after the Japanese earthquake, and it turned around. So, you know, the valuations aren't awful. Got it. Uh, but the demand, people need that yield. So you're still seeing the demand out there. Got to run. Andy, thank you. Some great stuff. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Andy Feltis uh, joining us there.